Hi everyone and welcome to a new devlog episode. It has been a while since the last one and today we're going to be talking about game character design. More specifically, I wanted to share with you my experience and the process that I've learned so far to create a game character from concept art to character rigging. The whole process was new to me and it took me a bit of time to not feel completely lost and hopeless, but in the end, I am quite happy with how it turned out. So, without further ado, let's get started. In general, creating a game character usually requires going through the following steps. First of all, we have the concept art. This is where one has to decide which type the character will be, if it's a human or some creature, or if it's the hero of the story or a sidekick or even the enemy maybe, and so on. This is also the step to decide all of the visual details and the general look that you want your character to have. Add into that which kind of accessories or weapons he carries, his personality and so on. Then, once all of that is figured out, one can start the sculpting phase. This part generally starts with blocking the rough forms of the character in 3D and then moves on to making a high resolution sculpture. To me personally, I think that this is the most enjoyable part of the process, simply because you can just lose yourself in the details of the sculpture and just get in the zone. Then after that comes the retopology phase. This is a very important step because it's either gonna make your life a whole lot easier for the coming steps or it's gonna make it very darn difficult. In this stage you basically want to make a lower resolution model of your character that is meant to reduce the complexity of the 3D mesh so that it would go from this to this. See how many points or vertices we got rid of while still keeping the same shape. This makes it a lot easier to handle by the computer and makes the game run much smoother. Then comes the UV mapping phase. This is where you transfer all of the details that you have in the high resolution mesh to the low resolution model with a process called baking. I'll try to talk more about this later on in the video. This way you end up with all of the details and the complexity that you have sculpted before in the very optimized and simplified mesh that you have just made in the previous step. And now you are ready for the texturing and shading phase, where you can start coloring the model and applying some textures, while still of course keeping in mind how your game character is going to be rendered. At this point the 3D model is basically complete, and ideally it would look really close to the concept art that you have started with. Finally comes the rigging and animating stage. This is obviously where all the animations related to the character and its accessories are made. But in my case, I made a basic rig just to pose the character for rendering. And for the animations, I used some that I found on Mixamo. Because at the moment, I don't need super personalized animations for my character. So I will not talk that much about this part of the process. And then basically you're done. After all of these stages finished, your game character is ready to be imported to the game engine that you're using. But of course, you are not really completely done. Because from this point on, you can still continue refining and tweaking the design of the character to see what would work best in the game and the style that you're going for. And this would last until launch day. So as you can see, in general, this is a quite lengthy process that can take from a couple of weeks to six months or maybe even more. It all depends on the style and the type of games that you're making. If it's a 2D platformer, then you'll probably take a lot less time than a AAA game for example, where each stage of the process is handled by specialized teams. And if you'd like to know more about this process in big game studios, then check out the links in the description box below. I think you'll like them. Great stuff. Okay, so now after this brief introduction, let's finally make our own character. Starting with the concept art. So in my case, I knew I wanted a humanoid panda that is going to be one of the main characters of the game. And during this phase, I wanted to focus on three main things that I think are very important for concept art. The first thing is to keep the shapes simple so that you would start with the most basic shapes like a triangle, a circle and rectangles and build your characters using just those shapes without focusing on any details. 
The second thing is making sure that you have a recognizable silhouette. It is not shown here, but if you try to fill a character with just one color, you should still be able to recognize it. For example, if I show you this picture right here, you would immediately know that it's Pikachu, just by looking at the silhouette alone. And finally, having a backstory for the character. It doesn't matter if you're going to use it in the game or not, I still think it's a very important piece because it'll help you give your character some unique traits and features depending on his background and his personality. Overall, I recommend you trying to get a little bit more familiar with the concept art in general by watching some videos on the subject. So after going through a number of iterations and combining different shapes, I finally started getting comfortable with some designs that I wanted to push further. So I wanted to make different poses for this character in order to just know him a little bit better. You can really see me now but I was doing some air quotes. Anyway, after finishing those poses and inking them, I decided to make a more polished illustration where I'll try to figure out the overall look of the character with the colors and values, the materials and textures that I'm going to use and so on. The idea here is not to have the most polished illustration ever, but just to throw out as many things as possible to help you get a clear visual representation of your character and have a concept that you like so that you can stick to it. If you want to make some changes to your character, make them now. Trust me, it will be much faster to change things at this stage than after committing hours of work on the 3D model. So, once you have enough references and poses for your character, and you feel confident about your design, then you can tackle the next phase, 3D modeling. As I've said before, now we just start with blocking out the general form of the character. And here I apologize, I lost some footage, so that's why you see me starting halfway. But I hope that you get the idea. Deform some spheres here and there, and then put them into place. Then I immediately go into adding some details into individual parts, like the arms, the head, and so on. For the armor that you see, I tried to keep it low res from the beginning in order to finish it faster, but that didn't really matter as you'll see in the end. So anyway, at this stage, I just put on some music, get into my zone, and try to work out the best possible 3D version of the illustrations that I just have made. And after that comes retopology. Now let me tell you, this part was really tricky for me, especially as a beginner. I didn't know exactly what to do, when to do it or even why. I just knew that it was necessary. But I think the only good thing that I did during this stage is that I've live streamed the head retopology on Twitch. Which by the way is one of the hardest part to do. But I was really lucky that a very kind person watching the stream helped me a ton and kept giving me a lot of feedback and shortcuts to speed up the process. I really think that without him or her, the same amount of work would have taken me probably two or three times as much. And that without even mentioning the immense frustration that I would have felt on my own. So once again, thank you beautiful human. I then started on the arms and the rest of the body, where I kept using the same technique that I learned during the live stream. Basically, I tried as much as possible to use only quads and for the body parts that needed more attention, like for example the mouth, the eyes and the hands, they were dealt with on their own and were then connected to the rest of the body. And this I believe is just a simple and dirty way to get a somewhat quick and okay-ish retopology, but I think it's far from suitable for a model that would be used for production, since for that case one has to really be deliberate about the flow of the topology and where every line connects because this is going to be really important during the animation phase but in my case I didn't want to complicate my life too much so I decided to go with the simplest thing that would still get me some decent results another thing that I will try to improve upon in the future is using different mesh resolutions for different parts of the body like for this model I use exactly the same number of quads throughout the whole body from the head to the toes, whereas I would have preferred to have given more resolution to the hands and the face and maybe a bit less to the torso and the back. But anyways, once the retopology was complete, I added the shrink wrap modifier, which as the name suggests, shrinks the mesh and wraps it around the object of your choice, 
in this instance the high resolution scoped so that I can transfer all of its details to the low res one. And then I also added the multi res modifier which is very neat because you are able to change between low res and high res sculptures with the click of a button. And at this point you have probably noticed with your eagle eyes that the model doesn't really look like the concept art. Well, you're not wrong. I still have to replace the arm with that gun thing, add the armor and the weapon, the hair and a lot of stuff here and there. And since I had already worked on this model for way longer than I expected, I basically had two choices left. First one, either spend more time on it and finish it completely with all the bells and whistles, or not finish it and try to use it in game just to see what is working and what needs to be changed for future iteration. I of course went with secret option number 3, do neither and go play 10 hours of Astroneer. Yeah, genius right? I kept playing that thing until I made a somewhat decent spatial base on the first planet. This game is really awesome and addictive, you should definitely go check it out if you haven't. Anyway, after this mid project crisis has finally ended, I went back to the last remaining stages, UV mapping, texturing and rigging. And since I yet again lost most of the footage for this part, I'll just show you what I did directly in Blender, so I'll just meet you there. Ok so here we are now in Blender and as you can see this is my final mesh. I have just given him a little bit of an expression to the face just so that I can see if it's working or not and maybe just give it a little bit more of a visual interest. I can also here lower down the resolution and as you see here the number of vertices also went down. I think I'm gonna actually use this uh, mesh on, uh, on the game just so that it runs a little bit more smoothly actually a lot smoother and I don't have any problems in the beginning so but for now we can keep the resolution a bit up so what you wanna do for the UV mapping is just giving the mesh some seams as you can see around here and try to hide them as much as you can these seams actually tell the software where you want to cut down the mesh in order to project this mesh, this 3D mesh into a 2D surface. Okay, so this is really important because then you are going to basically be working on these 2D surfaces and images to paint and texture your, your character. So if I if I have here the the UV editor, you can see that I've already done that. And if I select the character, you would see that I have here my UV islands, and I've already went ahead and painted them all, or painted some of them at least. This is this here is the part of the face. This is the projected hand. This is the other hand. This is the, the back, I believe, and this is the, the front. So, yeah. Once you have your UV islands, you can then go to the texture paint. Either paint directly from here or paint directly on the, on the character. And I've already went ahead and done that. So nothing super fancy, I just have two basic colors. And I think it's enough for, for now, for the testing phase. Uh, once you have that as well, you can just go ahead and start with the shading. And for the shading, I have used a free shader, which I'll link in the description. Uh, it's, a, it's a stylized shader and it's really fun. Uh, and by the way, I have baked this uh, this texture here that you can see and I have saved, saved it as an image and then given it back to the to the model so that I can use this shader along with the, the texture that I have given him in the beginning so now with the shader you see that it gives him a really nice effect with this rim light here and there are also some gradient of colors so for example for the rim light, 
you can just uh, shrink it down or make it a lot more pronounced here as well for the light levels the sharpness and so on and of course you can sh play around with this as much as you want make him green and I don't know add different kind of colors that you that you see here but I just like it the way it was to be honest and uh, yeah so once your character is all shaded like this what I have done is that I added an armature so I go to object mode and add shift a add armature human metallic you get a little something like this which then you just try to link to your to your mesh you try to fit the hands where the hands would be the torso the legs and so on I have already went ahead and did that so I'm just gonna show you what it looks like um, turn this off so this is the rig that I have I also gave it a basic pose and now if I turn on the if I turn on the, the model this is what we have and basically with this the model is shaded and textured and rigged and uh, I added some lights from here and there and some planes and basically that's it okay so now I'll just leave you with the final cycle render on the left side of the screen and on the right side we have the EV rendering engine this video has taken me a long time to finish so if you like it please leave a like and subscribe to the channel and also just write down in the comments below what you think of the model what you like and dislike about it what do you think should be improved and so on i would really love to know also don't hesitate to follow me on twitch i stream weekly there so i hope to see you soon next week i'll be importing this character to unity and add some more features to the game so stay tuned for that. With that being said, thank you so much for watching. Have an awesome day and see you next time.